Hi everyone, and welcome to the Filecoin and IPFS monthly ecosystem roundup. Thank you for taking the time to join us today from across the globe as we take a look at the most exciting developments from across the Filecoin and IPFS ecosystems. We're thrilled to have you all here and have an action-packed agenda in store. My name is Angie McGuire, and I'll be your host for today's roundup. We have had another brilliant month full of releases, events, updates, and more. Zooming in on events. In Asia, the community got together at East Seoul and Build Little Asia. In the US, folks headed into the woods for DWeb Camp. And we all got together online for Consensus Day and HackFS, where over 145 projects were submitted. Before we dive into our discussions, let's quickly go over the agenda for today's call. We'll kick things off with an ecosystem update from the brilliant Stefan Vervat. Then members of the Falcon community will give us a quick fire overview of the amazing projects and tools they've been working on. Next up, it's time for a demo from our app of the month file market, followed by a quick Q&A with Ilya Orlov, hosted by the awesome Ashwan Samuel. Then it's time to spread the love by giving shout outs to your Phil MVPs. To close this out, we'll take a look at what's coming up for the rest of July. Don't be shy. You can participate in today's roundup by leaving comments and questions in the chat for our presenters, tweeting with the hashtag Falcoin Roundup, or if you'd like to present a future roundup, then we'll share the details at the end. And off we go. I'm excited to introduce Stefan Vervat to give us an update on what's been happening across IPFS, Filecoin, and Web3. Over to you, Stefan. Thank you, Angie. And here's an update on IPFS and Filecoin for this week. The mission of Filecoin is to create a decentralized, efficient, and robust foundation for humanity's information. Filecoin has become the storage network of Web3. Not only that, Filecoin is now a layer one blockchain and allows, thanks to smart contracts, for much more applications and unique capabilities, and is poised to power the open data economy. The Falcon Master Plan exists of three phases. Phase one is to build a scalable data storage network that attracts exabytes of storage capacity. Two is to onboard massive amounts of data and preserve that data on chain. Three is to make that data useful thanks to unlocking data services like compute, retrieval, and the new programmability capability that the FEM provides. So let's have a look at scalable data storage. Phase one, today the network has 3,672 storage providers across more than 40 different countries, which is incredible. Not only that, of those SPs that are storing data, 41% are actually taking deals. 41% of the total SPID accounts are taking deals today, where last year in January, only 3% were taking deals. So a massive increase in providers contributing by storing data. 153 million fill is pledged to safeguard the network and its clients, and a total of 13.7 exabytes of raw capacity is available. So still a lot of room for more data to be stored. When we look at phase two, in the last 18 months, we have stored as a community 1.2 exabytes of data onto the network. It's an incredible acceleration of 39x, and it's contributed uh, more than 1,700 clients, unique clients have contributed to this onboarding phase. In June, actually, we saw a peak of six petabytes of daily data onboarded, which is incredible. Um, and as you can see, the clients that are onboarding data sort of like range from web to research, universities to NFT platforms, and many. Uh, Web3 dApps that are being built today and storing data on Falcon. Now, if you look at where we are today, we have successfully as a community, as a network, um, implemented storage markets and accumulated a ton of capacity. We have accumulated a ton of data and still growing. And now the community has moved its focus on enabling building blocks to make data useful. Um, and that include retrieval markets, compute over data, the Falcon Virtual Machine, and IPC. In the last three months, FVM has been launched and successfully adopted. Here are some numbers on what we have seen. Since the launch, we have now more than 82,000 active FVM wallets, which is incredible. More than 7,000 new wallets came online in just the last month. We've seen a ton of new DeFi solutions coming online and other dApps that are built by more than hundreds of teams that are currently working on FEM and have built more than a thousand smart contracts so far. More than 1.8 million fill is currently held in smart contracts. Um, and so total um, of four and total of 40 plus major Web3 partners are integrating FEM in their solutions, uh, in their exchanges, 
their wallets like MetaMask, Seller, OKX, Acceler, and so on. So massive adoption, and we continue to see a huge interest as new use cases are being built. Now, the teams are tackling the remaining building blocks like compute over data and retrieval markets and what we now call interplanetary consensus. If you look at uh, a couple of examples here that I want to call out, one in particular on the retrieval markets is Saturn. Saturn is one of the solutions that are out there to build retrieval capabilities. It's a CDN-like network that has now more than 2,000 endpoints um, that are contributing to caching data for a better user experience when it comes to retrieval. The Compute Over Data Working Group is collaborating with multiple decentralized compute stacks to build compute capabilities for specific use cases. And as we know, there's always different solutions, different types of teams that will work on different problem statements. Um, we believe that it's important to bring all these uh, community members into a working group. So please, if you're interested, have a look at Compute Over Data Working Group, cod.cloud for more information. Last but not least, the Interplanetary Consensus Working Group allows you now to horizontally scale and build a more custom consensus algorithm for localized use cases that maybe require a lower latency and a faster response, but are willing to give in on some of the security uh, attributes in return for faster performance. So here as well, let ch check out fill.space where you'll see new ways of building uh, faster consensus solutions. Next but not least, IPFS. Um, quick update on where we are in the IPFS network. IPFS makes the web work peer-to-peer. -peer. Um, it's content addressing based with CIDs and it's the data and content platform for Web3. As we look at IPFS, what's really important is not only adoption and, and the contribution of the developers, because we now have more than 60 developers contributing to the core implementation. And we have a total of seven major IPFS implementations and now also adoption in two major browsers so uh, native support for CIDs, that means uh, we also have seen 207,000 IPFS nodes running. Um, and what's more important here is that the content routing speed continues to improve, but now lower than half a second um, in performance, which means that you know the UX experience is getting better, but also the, the use cases that could take advantage of the IPFS network is only increasing. So it's amazing to see that this network has continued to improve its performance, continued to improve its adoption when it comes to uh, new um, browsers and, um, and, and languages. Last but not least, um, IPFS and Falcon are in the news. I picked that one for this week. Point Telegraph did an, uh, an article on universities using blockchain-based storage to protect and de democratize data. Perfect example of how a research department, in this case, um, the professor of University of Utah, was responsible for helping uh, make an open client, open climate data set for over three petabytes in size um, from NASA to make that available to the research community. And they used Filecoin to make that uh, possible. And what's really important here is that it's not just uh, providing access to what was normally stored in a silo to the remaining uh, research community, but also it's providing access of a verifiable a copy of that original authentic data. And what's so important for researchers is that they have access to the authentic data set and they can demonstrate that it is the authentic data sets and they're guaranteed the integrity of that data. And that is super crucial. And it's amazing to see that in the research community, the researchers really understand the value of their data sets. They really care not only to preserve it, but to ensure that the integrity is maintained. So again, you'll see more examples come out in the next couple of months, but perfect example of why um, it's so important what we do as a community here. All right, with that, that's it for this week. Angie, I'll pass it on back to you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Stefan. Looks like June has been a really strong month for both Filecoin and IPFS. If you want to learn more about anything Stefan covered, then check out the links below. In our next segment, we're going to dive right in and hear from some of the people, projects, and organizations who are making waves. It's time for Wins of the Month. Hi, my name is Frank Marchis. I'm a researcher at the City Institute and also the Chief Scientific Officer at Unistella. Um, I've been using Falcon uh, for a project called Assign in Space. The sign in space is a simulation. We wanted to simulate the reception of an extraterrestrial uh, signal coming from a civilization elsewhere. For this, we use an ESA spacecraft to send a signal to our own planet 
and antennas around the world collected these signals. Uh, we made these files available to the world using the Filecoin technology. Uh, we got multiple downloads. Millions of people downloaded the files. So in an attempt to understand the, co the content of this, these files and to be able to tell us what those hypothetical aliens wanted to tell us. Hi, everyone. My name is Becky Vasquez, and I'm the Marketing Communications Producer at Vision. We are so excited to be introducing Passkey support for odd apps. Uh, Passkey support is our uh, third uh, passwordless login option for developers. We have Web Crypto API and Wallet Auth, which is a blockchain wallet login option. Um, so we're really pleased to be offering Passkey support. Um, as many of you, I'm sure, know, uh, Passkey is kind of like the marketing name for um, Web WebAuthn, and it's just being integrated into Android, iOS, Mac OS, Windows, and so many others. And it's going to end up with billions of users uh, in the coming years. So um, we just knew that we we had to integrate this uh, into um, our stack, and. Uh, we're very excited about that. So um, big shout out to Hugo Diaz, who uh, did a lot of research on this and put the library together. And if you're interested, you can check out the GitHub repo uh, linked on the slide. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Today, I'm excited to share with you that we've launched Lassie, which is a lightweight retrieval point for IPFS and Filecoin. Lassie makes the client side of retrieval simple by finding and fetching your content for you. It retrieves seamlessly from either Kubo, IPFS, or Filecoin. It will find the content, or the user can specify where to get this content. Then it queries multiple providers in parallel and returns data to the client from the fastest sources. Today, you can use Lassie in a few different modes, directly via a CLI, as a Go client library to be integrated into your Go applications, or an HTTP daemon to be integrated into your non-Go applications. Currently, Lassie is being used by Saturn, which is a decentralized CDN with cash misses to Filecoin and IPFS. In the past seven days um, on Saturn via Lassie, we've actually served over 90 million CIDs, which is great progress. So try out Lassie and give us feedback. Um, we just want to give a huge shout out to Hannah, Rod, and Kyle for getting Lassie to where it is today. Thanks, and there's more to come. Hi, everyone. This is Elsa from Hashmix. Hashmix team has been working in field staking and lending for more than two years and has attracted 1 million field max. To eliminate trust costs, we built Hashmix field liquid staking protocol on FVM. Our TVL has reached $1.4 million within a month. For field holders, Hashmix provides a no lockout period pool with SD token CW field as extra liquidity. Currently, the staking APY is 12%. For storage providers, they only need to stake beneficiary as collateral. We offer flexible repayment plans. SPs can repay their loans at any ritual and any time they prefer. Our valuation model has been tested and proven to be safe for two years, which maximizes profit while ensuring safety. For field holders, join Hashmix today to earn great profit under tested safety. Storage providers, if you need fill, welcome to try our protocol and evaluate your miners. Thank you. Hey, it's David Ronchek from uh, Baka Yao and Expanso. Uh, last month, we were extremely pleased to announce the hitting of 1.0 of Baka Yao. That is an API stability release, as well as a whole bunch of great new features, including federated learning, insulated jobs, uh, private clusters, and lots more. You can read all about it on our blog. We also were extremely pleased to um, have and host our Compute Over Data Summit 3. Uh, this had over 200 in-person attendees. Uh, we launched Project Lilypad, which you heard from Ali last month about, uh, as well as waterlily.ai, a feature to enable uh, creators to get um, uh, to get rewards for, like, uh, for hosting their, their art. Um, we got a ton of uh, coverage in Forbes and SiliconANGLE, as well as hit 1.2 million total events on our public network and 50,000 downloads of our uh, launch since public. 
Um, we also had our first commercial customers, and we are extremely excited to continue supporting the Protocol Labs network and uh, all the compute over data efforts that are going on today. Hey, everyone. My name is Jonathan Schwartz. I work on Glyph. And our win of the month this month is that we opened up the Infinity Pool to storage providers, and the Infinity Pool deployed its first just under a million US dollars worth of Filecoin to storage providers. Uh, we're really happy with the work so far, and uh, there's a lot more wins coming next month than the months to follow. Uh, so if you have Filecoin or you're a storage provider, definitely get in touch and get involved with the pool and keep your eyes on Glyph to see what's coming next. Thanks. All right. Fantastic. Thank you so much to all of the teams for sharing their wins. If you'd like to learn more about these projects or if you'd like to be featured next month, then check out those links below. Okay, now it's time for the July App of the Month, Vile Market, presented by founder and CEO Ilya Orlov, followed by Quick Fireside with Outer Course Ashwan Samuel. Hello, everyone. My name is Ilya Orlov, and I'm the leader of File Markets team. Also, I'm the voice of Web 3.0, and I have a proof. Right now, I would like to show you the demo of File Market and how to mint a file bunny our first eft collection on filecoin super thrilled about that all right so here's our main page and straight on top you can see the banner uh, which is saying that minting is life uh, if you're not in the white list uh, you can dm me and get your spot my twitter or telegram handle is under kong like underdog plus king kong and uh, right now, uh, let me go on with the main page. Uh, so File Market is a no-code NFT shop builder with privacy layer uh, for NFTs and perpetual decentralized storage. Uh, we have invented EFT protocol, encrypted file token protocol that allows to attach encrypted content to an NFT. We believe that's one of the features that can add real value uh, to a non-fungible token. So here you can see that uh, you are able uh, to mint your EFT already right now on filemarket.xyz, but you can also apply for your own shop with your own design and which is going to be published under your own domain. By the end of the year, we plan to have a visual builder, but for now it is only possible um, in that way. So you'll need to fill in the type form. And now I would like to go straight to the file bunnies landing page and show you what we have prepared for you guys. All right, here we go. So file bunnies are mythical creatures that are building file market in the dataverse uh, to help humans store, encrypt and create any type of data. So here we have prepared a little roadmap with all kind of characters that are helping uh, to explain everything what is going on right now. We've got the Filecoin here, File Market Jedi, and Dr. IPFS, and all their friends to help them uh, create the dataverse. So here you can find the roadmap with all the important milestones and everything what we have already achieved. And you can also find out what to expect, especially if you are our early adopter. We have prepared a lot of interesting activities and benefits uh, for our supporters. So make sure you stay tuned. All right, here we have some more characters. It's pretty interesting to check them out. The, each one of them has, has a little story. So here we have more information about what to expect, which kind of benefits uh, we have prepared. And here we have all kind of details about what is going on, what is EFT, the role of file market, who are the artists behind uh, file bunnies collection. And of course, here you can check out all rarities of different file bunnies that you are able to mint. All right, so let's mint one now. So I'm already in the whitelist, so the free mint is active here. So let me first connect the wallet. 
uh, there are two steps. First, you need to connect your wallet. And if you are the new user, you will need to create your own file wallet. You'll get the mnemonic phrase that you'll need to save. This file wallet will, st will store the keys from all the files that you will need. So I have one already, actually. So I'm just going to be uh, logging in with my password. All right, now let's go for the mint. All right, here is our file bunny. And we need to wait for the seller to transfer the encryption keys to the file. So let's just check out another file bunny that I have minted already before. And here you can see that uh, you can download the encrypted contents and let's check it out what is inside so it's going to be an archived folder and if we open it up we can see a lot of different cool things inside like for example we have some file coin wallpapers we have a file coin music track that was created by ai and there is one additional card uh, which is not a jemmy unfortunately so i wasn't lucky but if you get a jemmy you're going to be able also to participate in our community raffle in july so here we also have a file coin 3d coin and we can actually also try to mint it on our platform just to showcase how you can mint your own eft here we have some bonuses from our partners uh, with some QR links that will lead you to some interesting uh, rewards. So make sure you check them out. And in this folder, you're going to be able to find info cards about all kinds of different projects from the ecosystem. All right. And now let's try to mint our own EFT in the very end, just to get in touch and feel how it works. So you can upload two kind of files, a, a public preview picture and an encrypted file that you want to put inside your NFT. So uh, here we can choose Filecoin's 3D model and an actual 3D model inside the encrypted container. So here we can choose the public collection. We don't need to create our own one. We write a little description here, then we can choose the category of the file. And let's choose a subcategory. Let's just choose the gadgets. And here we can also type in some tags if we want. Define the royalties. And at the very end, we can also choose a license uh, for our NFT. All right, let's mint. And here as how it looks like so we can preview the actual 3d file right here in our interface and um, here we can also download the file and you can open it and it's going to be opened in a special software for creating 3d Okay, thank you so much, everyone, for your time. Uh, I was really happy to show you what we have. Uh, we are super excited about the future of Filecoin and um, happy to build with all of you. Thank you so much and may the force be with you. Hello, Ilya, how's it going? Hey, hey, hey. Nice to be here. Super excited. I was just watching my own video and um, yeah, and now I'm happy to be here online. Well, congratulations well, congrats. on all of the amazing progress that you've made since I believe we first met in Hong Kong. And I think it was, you know, you all, you all were early in the roadmap and now you guys have done an amazing job. So Ilya, can you kind of set the stage for our audience here? Can you explain the concept behind file bunnies? How did you land on this idea? You know, who, how did you and the team come up uh, with this idea? Yep. So it has all started like with idea of mine, like about two and a half years ago, 
uh, about like what if we like add the real value to NFTs and what if we let like a wider audience in the world, like for example, industrial designers like use NFTs. And it was all about like hidden storage, which can be attached to an NFT. And that's what we have been, been building in the FBM Early Builders uh, Incubation Program, uh, mentored by Sarah TM. Thanks to her so much. Uh, she was helping us a lot. And uh, we pretty much have, have came up uh, finally with uh, File Market. And then uh, we were getting ready for the FBM mainnet launch. And then we thought, all right, this is a historical moment. And we just want to give a tribute like to 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 the whole community because we really believe that Filecoin is special and, and the, the, the vibe is special and uh, uh, we really love the community and to be a part of it. So we decided to dedicate the whole collection to pretty much uh, all the ecosystem members and yeah, become the part of this historical moment. And it has actually taken a little bit more time than we have expected, but uh, we are still super happy that it's already live right now. What an amazing initiative and, and congratulations on, on the execution. One thing that you mentioned in your demo is the idea of the EFT protocol. Can you just explain a little bit more about what this is and how it's different from what's used today? So normal NFTs, they are kind of empty. I mean, they only have public data, right? And I, for the DGEN community, it's fun and cool and I mean, like still, we can see a lot of interesting, cool use cases, uh, of, of course, and a lot of uh, bad cases as well. But uh, we were thinking, what if we add the real value to NFTs? And uh, we, while we were building, we have realized that our modification of ERC-721 can become like a new standard and can become completely decentralized standard on uh, FVM uh, using both uh, Solidity and Rust smart contracts. Uh, and uh, we decided to call this new standard EFT. Like it sounds pretty uh, interesting and it means encrypted file token. Awesome. Well, very innovative. And I guess a quick follow-up question there is, you know, how do you specifically utilize IPFS and or Filecoin today in, in all of your uh, different works, whether it's with File Market or with the File Bunnies collection specifically? So right now we are both using Filecoin as decentralized storage and uh, for both <clears throat> public and private uh, data, but also we are using FEVM Solidity smart contracts. Uh, we believe uh, it's it's um, like not it's like right now the network is FEVM network is still young and maybe not so many wallets are there, but uh, it was our mission to uh, also like attract as many. Uh, people like from the wider Web3 audience uh, to see that what is happening, actually, we really believe that with some simple things uh, with added value, we can really onboard them into the concept of a data economy and explain them everything what, what is going on here, because uh, it's impossible to build the decentralized web without the decentralized uh, storage. And that's why uh, we are not only technologically uh, uh, here, but ideologically like it's very uh, like a big honor for us also to build on filecoin and i mean filecoin while when when i've realized that and when i was choosing the decentralized storage network i was i just realized that there is no other network that would be so like developed like because filecoin was really focusing on this particular uh, goal in the last uh, 5 6 years uh, and maybe before it used to seem uh, strange, but now everything, like the whole picture is coming together. So uh, I believe that Filecoin is a blockchain with real value. And that's why we are also keeping, uh, let's say the level and we are we are trying to bring like NFTs with real value to the market. And we believe that there are a lot of use cases. File Bunny is just one of them. Each File Bunny has attached folder with a lot of interesting like content inside and even some bonuses from other ecosystem members we have partnered up with some of them and we have also created a list and an info card for, for each for each project out of the list of 135 projects we're building right now in the ecosystem and uh yeah but i think uh, this list is already bigger because many projects are actually joining every day yeah you all have done an amazing job i think of connecting with 
other ecosystem, Filecoin ecosystem collaborators and teams. And just a quick question, Ilya, how many file bunnies have been minted to date? Do you have that number right off the top of your head? Uh, yeah. So in total, we have uh, prepared 10,000 file bunnies. 7,000 are available for the free mint uh, if you're in the whitelist. If you're not in the whitelist, make sure you get in touch with us. Uh, there's still a space. So 5,000 free file bunnies have been claimed already. And we also have a public mint, 3,000 file bunnies for 12 fill each. And we have sold something around like 500. But right now we are here and we hope the ecosystem is going to support us. Uh, it's, it's a crucial moment and uh, the beer market is pretty complicated for fundraising. So this support from the community uh, is, uh, is, is a huge thing for us right now. Great. And as we run up on time here, Ilya, anything else you want to share with the, the audience of the IPFS and Filecoin Roundup uh, before we have to drop? Uh, yep. Uh, we would like to wish everyone good luck. And it's great that we are all here because we believe right now we are really truly coming to the third stage of evolution of blockchain, where we have not just a token smart con and smart contracts, but we have token smart contracts and data that can be controlled. Uh, from these smart contracts and that's how we can make finally the web3 economy sustainable and come to the to the mass adoption because that's what the world needs we got to make the world financial and data systems transparent and uh, yeah like filecoin is one of the essential tools for that for sure so may the force be with us guys that's yeah that's my last message Appreciate that. Well, everyone, if you want to reach out or find Ilya or the File Bunnies community, uh, they're on the Filecoin Slack. You can also find them on their specific Discord. Feel free to reach out directly to Ilya or anybody else on the File Bunnies team. All righty. Thank you all so much. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye bye. Amazing. Thank you, Ashwat and Ilya. I want me a file buddy. I'll offer them in after this. Okay, if you'd like to learn more about file market, then head over to filemarket.xyz. The Filecoin community is made up of an incredibly diverse group of builders, storage providers, data stewards, and entrepreneurs from across the globe. Phil MVP is the part of the roundup when we take the moment to show our love for our fellow community members. First up, Filecoin Orbit China nominates FileFi for accelerating the construction of the Filecoin network. Next, huge kudos to the Themis Pro team for bringing liquidity to the Filecoin ecosystem. And finally, Caitlin wants to recognize Gainforest for their impactful work, which has led to them being finalists in the XPRIZE competition, which is huge. Congratulations to all of you. To nominate for next month's roundup, all you have to do is tweet the name of the project or person and the reason you're nominating them with the hashtag PhilMVP and we'll feature them in August. Our July roundup is almost complete, but there are lots of chances to get together virtually and in person in July. You can find out more info on all of these events below in the links. I want to highlight ETHCC in Paris, where friends from across the Web3, Filecoin and IPFS ecosystems will gather later this month. I'm so excited. Uh, to join in the fun, head on over to phil-paris.io to check out all of the events that are happening and make sure to stop by Filecoin Unleashed on the 18th to say hello to me and to hear about some of the latest engineering and storage breakthroughs from the community. Thanks so much for joining us today and to all of our wonderful community members for sharing their updates from across the ecosystem. The next roundup will take place on August 10th. If you'd like to share your wins and updates, then email events at protocol.ai. And for more info on everything that you've seen today, check out the links below. Thanks so much for stopping by and happy building.